Hello my fellow cigar smokers and welcome to Smokers Spot and another episode of The Night Owl. What are we smoking today? Something special? It's the Camacho Diploma Black. That's a limited edition from 2019 which they were they released it in a kind of a well looks like a plaque coffin or something but looking very nice I'll tell you a little bit more about the diploma series later on okay guys let's get this thing out of the cigar in here empty now <sighs> it's a uh, more or less a standard robusto it has a, a 50 ring gauge and is 5 inches beautiful looking stick I really really love the cigar you know guys I love Camacho anyways but this one especially this one Looking good. Mm. Sweetness, earth. Now what's that? Let's get it started. So guys, again, the Night Owl. Last time we were smoking the Padomo Bourbon Barrel Aged. Also, uh, well, it was a good cigar, but in the transition we had some problems with it. And I'm pretty sure that we, well, hopefully, we won't have the same problems here with that Camacho Diploma. Twelve on point. Already the first two puffs producing a rich and heavy smoke Jesus that's exactly the way I like my cigars it is Puro Honduras so wrapper binder filler both from both all three from Honduras And as a specialty, all Corojo. The diploma is one of the few, well, actually, not a few, it's the only series that was still available when uh, Christian Aurora uh, took over, or the Aurora family took over Camacho uh, and it's one of the series that is still available nowadays after uh, Davidov took over Camacho 
still there of course it's a different cigar but um, at least the name is still there and since it's a limited edition they are still they are still available but you really have to find your, your, your right now I'm not quite sure if you can find it in every brick and mortar store uh, online still no problem but you can see here and there they are not longer available so I would assume like maybe in six to ten months or so they, are, they will be probably really hard to get so if you're into Camacho and you haven't smoked the diploma plaque by now go and get a few uh, cigars um, they might be worth a try so other than <coughs> Jesus Christ other than it's a it's a it's a pure corojo they have also specialty that they were um, picking like the top leaves of the tobacco plant like they were doing the same method of picking tobacco with the uh, Cohiba Behica for example uh, so there's not a whole lot of tobacco that they can use in the cigar and that's why it's rare and that's why it's expensive even for Camacho uh, here in Germany they cost around 23 euros 23.50 something like this so that would be like 26 dollars around for Camacho that's it's quite expensive Say, let's drink something. Sticking with the Irish. That's the Liberties, the Dublin Liberties Irish whiskey. This time it's a plant, it's a plant whiskey. Uh, so they were mixing like crane and malt whiskeys together uh, to get a the taste they want. Um, and they call this one. You can see again, oak, uh, devil, and oh, the even over here, they they had something in Latin. Um, rather light. Caelum et Infernum um, <laughs> Heaven and Earth No uh, Heaven No Heaven and Hell Heaven and Caelum et Infernum Heaven Heaven and Hell <laughs> I think that's right uh, <laughs> Maybe I'm looking like an idiot now I will check it later on Um well, that, but that would fit with the uh, with the Oak Devil um, slogan over here. Over the years, the Oak Devil disappeared, seduced by the whiskey angels, escaping from the Liberty's distilleries, his dark powers subsumed by and infusing the maturing spirits. A devilish plant of double distilled premium malt and crane whiskies faithfully aged in bourbon oak casks for a full bodied rich smooth character. Holy shit, that sounds great. Not really, uh, the, the, the bottle is so dark but I can tell you cannot see it but I can tell you it's 
maybe one, maybe two classes left. Let's see. Not a typical Irish whiskey. My first thought was that there is peat uh, in the whiskey, but it's not peat. There's only one peated whiskey I know that's coming from Ireland, that is the Connemara. We we're doing a, a pairing months ago, Connemara and something I, I forgot <laughs> uh, but it's not peat actually it's it's woodish and that's that's great because the um, here our diploma plaque also has woodish flavors mm. sweetness wood some nutty flavors but very very fine balanced okay enough talking of cigars and whiskey I mean it's the most important thing of course but there are other things too So what's going on, my friends? What happened this week? Uh, actually, to be honest, I was kind of laid back. There wasn't so much to do. <clears throat> and I decided to... <clears throat> was easy going and I decided not um, not to stress the hell out of me this week um, and I think it's also part of the um, weather we only had this I mean I mean it's like small talk talking about the weather but there is an there is a there's there's something behind that why, I'm, why I want to talk about the weather first today. As like you know here in Frankfurt, it was like for the last two weeks, it was like raining every single day. Sometimes even snowing. Uh, but just a little bit, you know. It's it's. You know, Frankfurt is an area in Germany. We are surrounded by um, by mountains, uh, so we are in a valley, and so we are pretty good um, shielded from the weather. So most of the time, it's not getting so cold. Um, but sometimes, when it's getting cold, dude, it's 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 really cold. Uh, anyways, what I want to say, so for the last two weeks we had a lot of rain. Which on one hand is perfect because last summer and last winter was so dry here, that was incredible. So and everybody said, man, oh man, do we, uh, we need more water here, you know. I mean, it's not like in California or so, so there's no water shortage, uh, but that was immense you know so on one side I'm pretty happy that it's it's raining a lot but man 
when it's raining like two weeks in a row I'm well you know I'm not the kind of guy who's, who's getting depressed easily but uh, at one point you just need to get out you know but when it's raining the whole time not even my dogs want to go out you know <laughs> they actually the one that is he's hating water you know and when it's raining and when I'm taking like a last round he's standing at the door and looking at me and like are you fucking serious I don't want to go out there <laughs> I mean I can understand him <laughs> that's crazy actually the one uh, who's well, maybe not afraid of the water but like like I said he really doesn't like water um, other than drinking is actually still here in the mini lounge with me I'll try to um, um, have here on the other side you cannot see it there's like uh, my mobile and um, uh, if it works properly I will plant in a little picture of him uh, a short video um, and so yesterday actually today is uh, Sunday and it's Sunday because it's 1 a.m. or 1 30, 1 30 a.m. Um, so it's Sunday Sunday just started and yesterday it was the only good day in the last two weeks I was waking up and the Sun was shining I even made an Instagram post about that guys the Sun is shining hallelujah um, and it wasn't very cold uh, so I was waking up I, I I saw the blue sky and I thought oh thank you Lord and that day was totally different you know I was getting out in the garden was doing some work you know uh, checking out my new awning and <laughs> was talk a lot, a lot about that I was checking that one out I was cleaning up some stuff you know uh, and spent a lot of time outside and it was good it was good because and it kind of just at one day like we charged the battery a little bit you know uh, so but today um, it was raining again and uh, the sky was gray and the weather forecast that for the coming week will be very cold very rainy very dark <sighs> okay so what I'm talking about the weather yesterday a buddy of mine not really a close friend but um, like I said a buddy you know uh, in the last couple of years I was doing some kind of business with him uh, now and then so um, and we have like a, um, let's say we have a business partner we both know so and we all three had business together and though there was a reason to call me um, and so he called me make a long story short Jesus Christ um, and he started with the words oh man Andy I'm feeling so bad I'm feeling so bad it was it sounded like serious you know not like the typical how you do and anything uh life sucks you know not like this it was a little bit deeper i said what's going on man and he said he said like man jesus uh I lost some serious amount of money yesterday um, I said okay so, and he he's like I, I cannot go further like this that's nothing is working out you know I'm trying this it's not working out I'm trying that it's not working out and 
uh, I have no wife and like everything though my whole life is like it's like a mess you know you know okay man well, but I don't know what shall I do now you know so we we're just talking a little bit and uh maybe not tr I was not trying to cheer him up but he he gave me some details about his problem or problems and I kind of responded in the best way I, I was able to like giving a few giving me some advice what I think might be good and he was like man you know and he was keep on going with man and then after a few minutes he said like man I, I, I my thoughts are not so good you know and I said oh, what do you mean like like not so good like like what and he said oh man I don't know it's like it's not like suicide you know but I'm thinking about and he was like not saying like he wants to end his life you know not serious like this but like let's say on the f on the fifth floor there's like end of the story and he's like on the third floor you know like this <clears throat> so what do you do so I gave him a few I was talking a little bit more and then you know what um, man I know it's locked down and you know we cannot drink coffee but let's meet next week and talk a little bit um, so and here's this he has the circle closing to the weather you know and might sound silly but it's also part of the problem because I know a few people who have like this winter depressions you know when when it's just dark the whole time it's just gray and it's for for a longer period of time you know they're getting depressed because they affected by the weather and by their environment you know and I think that's also part of it so just have to be cautious you know and I said it so often in other videos uh, has nothing to do with cigars you know but we have to take care of each other you know so if you have a buddy who's not feeling good and and he's saying it, you know. It's not like you feel there's something wrong. He's even saying, "Man, I'm not feeling good. I've bad thoughts, you know." And and you have to react, you know. You you have to offer him something that uh, not like offer a solution, you know, but offer uh, that you are open, you know, that you are willing maybe not able but willing to help him you know and that he's like not alone I think that's important you know um, we'll see And sometimes it's for me I have to admit it's kind of hard to uh, to be like empathic like this because I'm really not the guy who's like easily depressed you know I have like like everyone else sometimes like having a bad day and that has absolutely nothing to do with depression you know and sometimes I have like a week where I'm not feeling good but then I'm easily coming easily coming out of that you know but I can definitely um, I think I can maybe not feel the way he's feeling but I think I like I'm uh, empathic enough to 
have a clue what he's going through, you know. And since I also have in my own family uh, people who are uh, kind of fighting with the same symptoms and with depression, uh, I definitely know what he's talking about, you know. <clears throat> so that was not such good news this week. But life ain't easy, you know. On the other hand, I had a very good... Uh, so that was kind of a depressing story, I have to admit, but I have something good too. After a few puffs and uh, a few sips of my whiskey. You know, there's a good side on social media. We're always complaining about, or a lot of people complaining about social media that like it's addicting and um, like addictive and people are spending too much time with their mobiles and on the front of the computer and stuff like this. And that's totally true. Um, but there's also a good side on it. I think in one of the last... Man, I did so many videos, I can't remember. But I think at one video I was talking about the good sides on social media in combination with the uh, with um, Corona. That people are now... Uh, also there's a lockdown. That people can connect easily through to Skype, Zoom or whatever. Uh, but that's not what I want to talk about right now is the good side on social media is or one of the good sides is sometimes you see very good stories you know like positive stories so here we go there's this one kid you know he's like I don't know 10 years old and he has a little sister and she's like 5 or so very little and um, they're playing out together and they're some uh, unleashed dog you know and all of a sudden this dog is going to wants to attack the little girl and so it was a dog like like the like a German, like a German Shepherd, you know the size. Don't know what what kind of dog it was. So he wants to attack the little girl, you know. So, and this this boy, like only ten years old, you know, like pushing his sister away and and standing between the dog now and the and his sister, you know. So the dog attacks him is attacking him instead of the little girl. He protects his little sister. And again, man, he's just 10 years old, you know. I don't know exactly 10, but he's looking like 10, you know. Man, and this dog, man, was crazy, you know. Like biting him in the face, and he has like now a scar that is going through over the whole face, you know, and parts of the flesh were crazy, you know. Was looking awful, you know. We're seeing photos from uh, of him like after the attack and it was Jesus Christ man that was crazy so but he managed you know to defend his little sister and finally the dog was run running away you know and before he like collapsed he was bringing his little sister inside and then you know uh, over So on one side it's a cool story, but because it shows like even a like a little boy how brave he can be, you know, 
I know grown up men who would just run away, you know. And he was just standing there and defending his sister. Like, wow. But here comes the, the end of the story, you know. It's like, so this little, this little boy is like a huge Avengers fan, you know. I mean, maybe you know that story. But it, I encountered it like yesterday and I was like, almost crying you know so and he's a big Avengers fan Marvel fan and so on and and here's the good side on social media the story like was was going viral you know spreading throughout the internet and then after a while the Avengers cast were picking the story up you know and like everybody from the Avengers cast was like contacting this little boy, you know, through his parents, of course, you know, so like uh, like video calls, you know, and there was I don't know the name right now from who was playing like Captain America, so he called him and said, "Man, I'm so proud of you, and don't worry, everything will be okay, you know, the scars will go away, and you're so brave, dude, you're a real hero, you know, and you know what here." I will send you a present. I will send you like the an original Captain American, uh, Captain America shield, you know. And then Robert Downey Jr., you know, uh, Iron Man was calling him, and and so on and so on. And it was like like everybody called him, you know, went to him in birthday presents and encouraged him to keep on going and how brave he is, and so on. And it was like touching, you know. And I was looking at the whole story, you know, and it was really emotional. And it was showing two things, you know. So that's a good, A, that's the good side about social media because when otherwise, like, imagine like 30 years ago, you know, nobody would have noticed. Maybe like the local newspaper would write a little article and maybe one year later somebody would pick it. And no, it goes like instantly, you know. But that can be a good thing. Um, and the second thing is it likes... It like boosts up my confidence in humanity, <laughs> frankly. Because there are still a lot of good things out there, you know. We are all easily getting attracted by all the all the all the bad things that happen, you know, but there's still good things outside there. We just we just have to try to to like moving all that all that crap, you know, that's going on aside and focusing on the good things. Like two days ago, I published the uh, Cohiba Ciclo 6 review, and until now, feedback is great, you know. Uh, and I have the impression that people really liked it, that's cool. Uh, and I mean, I was excited too, you know. It's, uh, I mean, I said it like in the unboxing and so on that. The last time I was smoking the Ciclo was way back, you know, and like all the problems we had in the past with Cuban cigars, I was kind of afraid that the cigar is not good. And we also talked a lot about 
expectations and patience and I failed miserably um, my expect my expectations were like like here you know and I said in the in the unboxing I said man I have to leave it in the box for more time in order to let it age a little bit more <clears throat> but you have to imagine you know I'm sitting here and like in front of me it's like the humidor you know and so like every day I'm seeing I'm looking at the Ciclo 6 boxes I was looking at it and I thought oh man that box is looking so nice I have to smoke you so I, one day I was just picking a cigar out of the box and like thinking I, okay I have to smoke you right now that's enough torture I have to smoke you right now and that was the point where I was doing the review so so it's not a secret that the Ciclo 6 turned out to be a great cigar so I was really happy that it was working out you know um, and a lot you know a lot of people like commented that oh man it's a pity that uh, it's it's so expensive it's so rare and hard to get and so on and my I agree totally you know it kind of sucks that some of these some of these diamonds out there uh, are so hard to get I mean like even for like even for me you know and I'm I'm dealing with cigars like on a daily basis you know I know a lot of people who are smoking cigars you know I'm very frequently in lounges and cigar shops and so on I know a lot of people have a, like a large network of people who are smoking so so even for me it was hard to get this, these sticks you know n not thinking about like a regular smoker was like smoking a cigar per week or so uh, it's just not possible to get this cigar and that's like that's it's not the way it should be you know but that's the way it is in Germany we have a saying that goes like das Leben ist kein Ponyhof and that means something like oh man life ain't easy you know life's hard so deal with it uh, and that's one of the things we cannot change you know cigars rare you have to be very lucky to get one so just happy just be happy when you have when you when you were able to uh, pick up a Ciclo 6 you know and it's the same thing with other cigars too um, on the other hand maybe it would be just like a cigar that uh, that is available all the time it's not such a highlight you know so there's the now it's a real highlight because it's hard to get you know and all that stuff and that makes him a highlight uh, so maybe it's it's this way what's going on this week I got a bunch of new cigars like let me think uh, this week I got the H. Upman, H. Upman Magnum 50 a box um, oh what again that was great again the, the Kato C number 50 remember we were doing like Unboxing, it was the first unboxing. Kato Say unboxing was the first uh, video of the series. 
and I think it was even part in the best of 2020 can't remember exactly but uh, I'm pretty sure it was in there uh, so the H up and Magnum 50 the Cater say number 50 coincidence both 50 the number 50 and the Magnum 50 from H Upman and oh that was also great the Joyo de Monterrey uh, Rio Seco so three boxes of new Cuban cigars new Cuban cigars but uh, and they go like in the shell for the regular smokes like the daily smokes I got the family series from a Togo Fuente box also lucky to get this one and what else Jesus forgot uh, oh, sorry that's enough it was the ash holy shit uh, And we started, and it was also funny, we started, okay, other way around, like last year, I think in the last episode, last year, uh, I announced like a new series, um, a Cookie Wisdoms, where I'm smoking a cigar, cracking up a fortune cookie and reacting to the, to the note that's in the, in the fortune cookie. Uh, we made the first episode of this one. With the and it was a surprise uh, combined it with the Placencia <coughs> year of the ox and it seemed like a lot of people didn't even know that Placencia was bringing out a year of the ox and uh, well on one side cool you know like um, maybe I'm not the only one who was talking about the Placencia year of the ox but at least one of the few people in the Cigar reviewing YouTube scene, um, but uh, then I thought, I mean, there was something. They missed something marketing-wise, you know. When nobody knows that they are bringing out the Year of the Ox, there's something going wrong, you know. Because like it's a, it's again, unfortunately, an expensive cigar, you know, limited, and nobody knows it's coming out. Uh, I don't know, man. There's. Um, shouldn't happen but again here the positive side is they are still available <laughs> so like uh, yeah, sometimes uh, when when some cigar manufacturer announcing like a very limited edition like it's like sold out the other day because everybody wants to have it so and this time it's different because nobody knows that they're coming out with the year of the ox so they're still available um, but now you know there is a placentia year of the ox but it's not a very good cigar <laughs> at least again man I'm just you know regular guy who's smoking cigars um, that's highly subjective you know maybe I think it's not a good cigar when you smoke it and you think like it's the best cigar I ever smoked cool totally subjective you know it just wasn't my cigar um, but it happens not all cigars we're smoking are good You probably cannot hear it right now, but here behind me there's the window, and I can st now it starts raining again. 
I can hear it. Uh, but when you're inside and it's raining, uh, like I, li I like the, the sound of rain. Just now it's a little bit too much, you know why. something different to drink right now and you know how we doing it here at coke it's time for a snack don't you think so my good friend Audi left his chocolate here uh, like two bars the one is already gone and now we're we're cracking open the other one lint chocolate 85 percent cocoa in there Good one. Empty again. I don't know what's happening with my whiskey over here. You guys probably heard about GameStop, right? That 
that like stock buying frenzy that was going on the last week or one and a half weeks now <clears throat> I was going through all the press and so on and I, I thought okay here's a little background for all of you guys that don't know what's going on GameStop it's like a brick and mortar store that uh, was selling games and like their specialty is they're also buying games from you and um, they selling it again then um, and they have stocks and all of a sudden like there was this reddit group wall street bats who like decided to let's push that stock so like a little group of small investors decided to push the stock and then it was like a movement you know like thousands of people were joining them and buying GameStop stocks you know um, I'm not into the stock market at all uh, I probably mentioned it a couple of times I'm just doing like cryptocurrencies Bitcoin Ethereum and so on uh, but the the technical um, approach on the stock market and cryptocurrencies are more or less the same like patterns when you're when you're going along when you're going short when you're buying uh, a security and when you're selling it and stuff like this it's more or less the same theory behind it so I'm always have a peek on the market so to say and when somebody usually uh, usually they are called market makers you know so like um, like private invest investment like private investors like not the real deal like the big guys you know the whales banks and hedge funds hedge funds that's just a German name now mama anyways you know what I'm talking about so all these guys they're they're playing with you you know what happens is if if a stock is reaching a certain level uh, all these whales you know they are shorting it means they are taking a bet on that uh, that the uh, value is decreasing you know they're making money with it what happens then is that like John Doe is losing money then you know because he bought the stock and of course usually he thinks that the value will increase you know but then there are these guys like banks and so on they are shorting it and then they're making money with it that you're losing money and that's a bad thing of course but it's allowed so what happened is like based on this reddit group and all the small investors that are buying the stock nevertheless also it already reached a level where like the big guys shorting it but it was increasing in value nevertheless because all these people these thousands of people would keep on buying this stock you know and so all the big guys they were losing money big time and I thought that was great it was great you know because these excuse my language excuse my language these motherfuckers they are making money because the, all the all the like the average guys they're losing money you know like tremendously and they're making money out of it and I don't want to go too much into a theory of stock rating and so on but man I like it was so cool you know that all these big guys were losing money uh, it's not like the first time they're losing money you know it's like just a game that's going back and forth so you, at one stock you're making money, another one you're losing money. But usually they, um, 
they're making money uh, on the back of like average people you know and this time they, they were losing money like big time and of course <laughs> and they complained you know a lot you know and they complained uh, on their regulation side on like all the all the brokers like Robin Hood and so on who was allowing people to keep on buying this stock and which is perfectly fine you know uh, I just loved it I loved it uh, but I'm now excited to see how if 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 that event like I don't think it will change the whole game you know but maybe it was it was the right like impulse uh, to to start a change you know that would be a very good thing In a couple of hours, again today is Sunday, by the time we record it, Sunday early morning, it's now like a couple of minutes past two, uh, we're doing the podcast again, like I was mentioning it earlier, this, the German podcast I'm doing all about uh, cigars and cigar related stuff. <clears throat> and I'm trying to taking the things I've learned here on Smoker Spot. What uh, so there are a couple of things that are working out and a couple of things that are not working out. You can see that what people like and what not. And in the past couple of months, we started this podcast like last year in August. And we were trying to <clears throat> taking the experience from here to what we can do in the podcast that people might be interested in. But after a while we figured, well we figured out two things. A, like the European cigar scene is different from the from the scene in the United States like that's my oldest daughter she's <laughs> in the hall and waving at me I don't know why, she, oh, why she's awake at this time she's going on the toilet <laughs> and she was looking at me like 
what the heck you are doing there? So, uh, what was I trying to say? Um, you know, usually I enjoy that everybody is is uh, in bed sleeping, and now she. <laughs> Maybe it was a little bit too loud. I left the door open actually, because remember, uh, one of my dogs I was talking about. He was, as I was starting, uh, like the recording. He was still here. But he don't. He, he doesn't like to smoke very much. So after a couple of minutes, he left, and I, I knew it. That's why I left the door open. Um, well, so um, what was I saying? Oh yeah. So we were trying to taking the experience of Smoker Spot to the German podcast, and we figured that European cigar scene and American uh, let's say North American cigar scene it's kind of different um, I mean not totally different um, there are of course a lot of cigars that are available on the North American market and on the European market but there are also a couple of cigars that are only available in the United States for um, Canada for example uh, and there are other cigars that are just available in Germany and the rest of Europe. Um, uh, Cubans, for example, uh, in Canada available, in the United States not. Uh, in Germany, no problem. You have it like on every in every brick and mortar store, you know. Um, but that's not the most important thing. The most important things we've learned is that. Uh, the way people are looking at cigars and cigar smokers is also different. Um, so as we tried like to not copy the the topics and the style I'm doing here on Smoker Spot, as we tried to adapt it to, for the German podcast, it was not working at all. Maybe not at all, but we figured, okay, that's it's not the same way. So we had to make here and there some changes in order to reflect the like the the German market, you know. And my impression is that, and that's a bad thing here. I uh, I have to admit is like cigar smokers in Germany, they're still so all the non-cigar smokers. They're thinking that some cigars are only smoked by people who are rich and like elite and it's their own society and like gentleman club style like this. And in the United States, on the other hand, it's like the feeling is like everybody can smoke cigars, you know, and that's so cool. Um, and here that's so bad uh, because the problem is it's hard to attract people to smoke a cigar because usually if you are not like introduced by a friend or someone it's hard for them to just visiting a lounge you know because they are so unsure what's going on in there like they still have this picture in their mind like like I said gentlemen's club you have to be invited and you have to wear a suit and like it's not like this man when I'm going to my favorite lounge I'm like in summer uh, like I have shorts and t-shirt and sneakers so that's no deal you know but the picture people have in their mind is completely different you know uh, and I also figured when I lived in the United States you know uh, long time ago but uh, I was working in Atlanta in Georgia uh, and part of my dad's family is from the States, so I spent a lot of time in the United States. And all the cigar smokers I've met there, uh, that's like, that's like supporting my statement, you know. It's like every, it's like everybody's able to smoke cigars, you know, so it's not a big deal.
so that's part that's a that's a thing I'm, I'm missing here I would love that it would be differently but I think it's so like it's hard to get this this picture out of people's mind you know um, and it makes it not easier uh, because of the regulations you know that you're not allowed to do advertisement and stuff like this so we'll see where this will lead us to on the other hand I figured that for example there might be there probably is a huge difference seagull wise between the United States and Canada uh, because there was like a few comments on the Cyclo 6 review and there's um, this one gentleman from I think from Canada I forgot his name it's not my first cigar I know that you are from Canada Carlos so it's not you uh, so this other gentleman uh, commented like uh, man like the Cyclo 6 in Canada is like per stick like $100 and it's as hard to get as it is here in Europe you know so of course it's like when you're buying like uh, the Cohiba Cyclo 6 box that contains like 25 cigars I mean it's like $2,500 for a box of cigars of course you are not paying that um, and so there, there's probably has something to do with taxes uh, that uh, taxes on cigars in Canada is probably insanely high and I don't know if that like is different in different states um, I have no idea maybe uh, Carlos or someone else from Canada can answer that if it's like in whole Canada it's like the taxes are crazy like this or it's like only in Ontario or wherever you know um, um, would be nice to know very nice burn ash was falling down uh, you saw it but I didn't pay a lot of attention uh, that's why other than that great you know flavors develop perfectly you know draw still super um, this woodish nutty flavors uh, very strong in the cigar and it's like a medium to full body cigar and also the sweetness is still there subtle but it's there lovely one hour nine minutes Jesus Christ again a long episode of the night owl but I wasn't talking so much in this episode just a lot of things are going through my head uh, but that's the way it is you know it's like I planned it as a relaxed format you know and I think it is so we have to endure 
the moments where I'm not talking, I'm just sitting here and smoking. Uh, but maybe you enjoy that too, together with me. My friends, I would say I enjoyed it today. I hope you enjoyed it too. Um, maybe let me know what you were what you were smoking or while watching it. The Camacho Diploma plaque is coming to an end. The whiskey is. So, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you can smoke a good cigar. If the weather sucks at your place, be strong. <laughs> will get better spring is coming I hope until then stay healthy stay safe enjoy life and I would love if you're coming back for the next episode of the night owl and for all the others <laughs> okay man that ash is not loving me uh, today Okay, doesn't matter. Guys, I wish you a good night. Uh, I'm thankful that you were staying together with me here. Uh, and if you would like me to talk about something specifically in the next episode, let me know. Put it down here in the comments. If you have some questions or whatever, that's the right place for it. We talk about everything, you know, like just today like jumping from weather to depression to cigars to the stock market you know like everything you know okay guys that's it good night